and we're clear. Action. We are rolling. Welcome back to the Monday Morning Cub Show. This is Carl. I'm Mahoney. This is another in person from the front yard. It is from the front yard. Beautiful day. Could have done a remote today, but I'd rather do it on a day such as We can do remotes. I'll do them. I'll do remotes any chance we get. I want to also get out of the house any chance I get. Any chance you get. You got young kids. Mahoney's here. It's Monday morning. We're recording Monday morning. It's going to come out a little bit later. I should say off the top. I am kind of sorry about that, but not really because it's an in-person. And so instead, we couldn't do it on Sunday, but we're doing it Monday morning in person. Throw it in the lab, cook it up, clean it, send it out. So it's a little bit later. Cubs off day. And they're fucking terrible right now. It's an off day. I wanted to get some vitamin D, a little under the weather. I feel amazing. Need to get out of the house, as mentioned. Mm -hmm. And here we are, sir. So if you're just listening to this, none of that matters. I mean, I, we could be doing this on an aircraft carrier in the Pacific. They wouldn't give a fuck. I want people to know that I'm enjoying myself in the sun, and it's a pleasant atmosphere. What I if hope you all are, too. What if you let people pick up on the fact that you are enjoying yourself because we just have a great show? We Let's need have a great it. show. Uh, Cubs are 32 and 34, six and a half games back, but so is everybody. Everybody's six and a half games back except for the Pirates. They're seven games back of Milwaukee. The Cubs went three and three this week, but I'll be honest, uh, did anybody else feel like they went one and five? I did. Yeah. Those White Sox games were exhausting, excruciating. So we'll get into that. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We got some Cubs history, a couple more announcements here. I'm not a call to action. You can subscribe if you'd like to. Not a call to action. No, you don't have to do it. We'd appreciate it. So that's announcement one. Two, outside means there's going to be some sounds. Those birds are chirping naturally. That's not pumped in audio. The wind rustling is from a couple of big oak trees, a couple of gorgeous beauties. Other thing, though. We might have some construction beep yeah. slash my neighbor has a lot of construction equipment. Guy's off on Monday mornings from work and he's You might hear a truck backing I up. I mean, the guy's awesome. Twice. Unbelievable neighbor. Steady series of beeps, no big deal. I'll put this fucking guy up against anybody's neighbor. He is, it sounds from the very high level overview you gave, it's a modern day Ron Swanson of Parks and Recreation. Craig Council as a neighbor would suck because he's a bitch. Craig Council, I don't think would be, would he even wave back? I'm overreacting. No, I've been criticized because I like David Ross. So in my reaction to Craig Council leaving, there's something more there though. Personally, yeah, I like David Ross. I think he's a good guy. But the fact that he's a good guy to me is like, what the fuck do you think he's like to the guys that play for him? I'm a schmo. How's Joyce? That's my mom's yeah. name. Years in between that interaction. What the, how do you remember that? I'm a nobody. And David Ross is, on multiple times has was like went above and beyond where i'm like this guy's unbelievable again let me repeat myself i'm nobody compared to the like what do you think he's like for the guys that play hard for him so that's where there is bias personally but i understand the bias i do have some things queued up here we can go over. If you have any other announcements we want yeah get you know what here? thank you for doing that because this is a good reminder the last announcement i had is you are the host of the show. Like, it's whatever. It's on Barcel Carl YouTube page or, you know, I got the feed. But for functional purposes of this conversation, it's your fucking show, buddy. I'm trying to drive. It's Monday morning Cub show with Mahoney and Carl. I wouldn't quite go that far, but it's appreciated. No, so, I appreciate you, brother. Why don't we get into it real quick? You want to? I do. And I just have some a few different topics. I got about seven or eight. I'm going to kind of run through... And I want to hear your take and so on. So first and foremost, seeing red. Seeing reds. Seeing red. Bulls. Reds. The team from Cincinnati. I'm Tibbs. seeing red because that series sucked. Um, I know I'm, I'm doing, you know, pretty much recapping yesterday, but we had Shota. That looked great. But, sure. no, I feel like where this series looked for me, we're just – we are the 500 ball club. Well, we're, we're below we're 500. Below, we're the below – we were like – we have 22 no, games No, we're coming. below 500. Let's rewind back to April. A big sentiment was what? A big sentiment was the Cubs are outperforming the win-loss. They're way worse than their win-loss record. And then we were stupid. I'm stupid. I'm a week away from apologizing to everyone that's ever listened to me for my bravado about this Cubs season. Because they're fucking 
lifeless. It's different than just not being good. I mean, lifeless. We're talking about can't score more than one run in an inning. Can't score a run if you do, it's one. So that's what I was, my question is, was I overexcited in the beginning eh, because no. of the way they were winning? I mean, if- Ball or strike, ball. You weren't too excited. There's a lot of reasons why people should have been excited. I feel personally responsible for not being smart enough to see that they could have gotten worse. I'm going back to April and saying they outperformed the win-loss record, or they outperformed their play in the win-loss, right? They won more games than they should have, and they blew a ton of games. And then we took that and said it can only go up. We said it it can only go Mm -hmm. up because they're playing poorly. They don't have Justin Steele. Guys are banged up. Just wait till they get cooking. They never did. They, May is one of the worst months. Buddy, I'll put that up with like September 04. Obvious, obviously, obviously, September 2019, 18 and 19, just brutal Septembers. Well, and yeah, it was a brutal month in May. We're in June now. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's really going to. See, fuck it. This is what we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this. I'm just gonna end up bitching about the Cubs. So this yeah. is the Monday morning Cub show, and this is the problem that I have with this team, and I think a lot of fans who I'm gonna get into this Twitter interaction that I I have where I said what pisses you off most about yeah, it. Yeah, what pisses you off most? I right mean, now? lifeless. It's veterans that are getting paid, and now I got this stinky taste in my mouth that like are some guys just like getting paid and that's it? What the fuck is that about? Like, what the f- mm. Now people are mad at Jed. People are mad at the players. Ask the poll. Very, very few people are mad at Tom Ricketts, I suppose. And, <laughs> well, then that kind of takes me. I'm going to go down the list here. What? We have Tennessee Jed, right? You're bound to wind up dead if you don't bet back to Tennessee Jed. When is he going to start making any moves? And it's it's now, I think, a little more clear that not much, not enough was done to put this team into position to win in the playoffs this season. As it, if the season ended today, I think we're a wild card team. How about this for a graphic? Where in Tennessee is Jed right now? He's in Chattanooga. But we got to get to Nashville. Like you're out. He, he, Jed is so far out of like what we need to be competing with the Braves and the Dodgers. I thought we were taking steps forward so we would have an infrastructure for great young players to come up, be impactful, then get into the get into the lifeblood of the organization. Like, have guys come up that are on their first, second, third year or whatever. They're rookie contracts. They're going into arbitration. Maybe you can, maybe you can extend one of those guys cheap for long term. You start to open up payroll flexibility long term again. You open up another window. Then you really go hammer free agency and overpay. They don't overpay in free agency. They don't take risks in free agency. Ever. Never. They haven't done it. Can he? Can Jed make adjustments mid-season now There's to a this team as it stands to put us in a position to actually win the division? Right now, I'm looking at a wild card spot. And I got to ask you, for, this is for production purposes, we did announcements first, right? Yes. We'll peek behind the curtain. One of the most time-consuming things involved is figuring out the chapters so that they can get matched up on the lineup card that goes on YouTube. So... We're in the second part of the show, I would say, right? Yeah, we're in the second part of and the show. And what do we call it? Tennessee, Tennessee Jed. Jed. But what about the part where Seen I was bitching red. about the co- scene red to Tennessee we, Jed? Yeah, and you could put a parenthesis S because we were talking a little bit about so the So this Reds. is the third thing we're doing. Yes. Jed's in Chattanooga. Can he do anything? Yeah, there's trades to be made. Do you have proposals coming up later? Do you want me to address them now? I can do a couple proposals. I have two, just a couple things that I read on the internet. Hey, know, call so. to action. I would like to see trade proposals from people. If you're going to complain about the Cubs, instead, send me, if like you're, when the Cubs lose, I'm interested. Let's go into Monday morning trade mill, okay? I got just two names I've seen in the news. We got Elias Diaz, catcher. Colorado Rockies. Mm-hmm. Go with him. What would it take? And nothing. Not, not not much. Going into Herbert, he's in a contract year. Rockies are brutal. That's the type of guy we could use right away to improve the catching position. Yeah, 
So you have to make a decision on Miguel Amaya. Obviously, you have to improve the catching position. If you're doing it in a place that's gonna, in a way that's gonna displace Miguel Amaya for his career in Chicago, then you're making a decision on whether or not this guy can catch for the organization. If you don't think he can, you need to move as as soon as possible. Now, there's enough body of work there to suggest he's like athletic, he's young, he could get better, but like he's not, he does not have the upside to justify his weaknesses. Jan Gomes obviously placeholder work with the staff. And I'd be interested in the starting pitching staff's take on Jan Gomes. Because if those guys come back and say, we don't give a fuck if that guy goes 0 for 50, he, we like the way he calls, catches, works. You know, the starting pitching's been good this year. Yeah, the comfort, there's comfortability there. Right, so you got to take the good and the bad with the catching like that. And Jan Gomes has been so bad offensively, though, that like I'm willing to ask all those questions and get rid of anybody if it's going to improve the catching. I just That's a position where if you're going to trade for someone midseason, you're kind of fucked because they don't know your personnel, particularly a bullpen that already sucks. Very interesting. That's something I never really thought of before, the complexities with dealing for a catcher. There's a lot more to think about. And how much of the pitch calling with a clock and simulated, like, his thought process going into it, is programmed into it, I'm not too familiar. I'm not too familiar with, like, how much the pitch clock has changed the dynamic of calling a game, relaying information, reading hitters, versus you know, and Jake used to talk about this on starting nine. When he was really good in that phase and just dialed in, he didn't give a f- any thought about who was in the box ever. It was like, I just have to execute this, and if it's good enough, I'm going to have a good result. So whatever, lefty, righty, I'm going to make very small adjustments. But it's, it's really just about where am I staying on the rubber, am I comfortable, am I staying back, et cetera. Now – that is like the highest level of professional baseball of you don't care about what the other guy's doing. You're just purely locked into what you're doing. Mike Trout is like that. Now, Jake had that spurt where he was just so fucking locked in and some injuries afterwards that prevented you from getting into that like physical locked in state. Um, nobody on the Cubs strikes me as somebody that can be on the mound and execute like that. Maybe Shota, Justin Steele when he's dealing doesn't really give a fuck. He's just kind of, I'm going to throw my fastball here, my slider down. It doesn't really matter. I don't have to set you up too much because my stuff is that good. So it would be interesting if you bring in an offensive-minded catcher, what guys would he catch? Jameson Tayon would be a fucking nightmare if you didn't know him. Apps with six pitches, like sensitive. Assad, right? Fuck. Javier Assad probably loves rapport. Why would you mess with his rapport too? So those are the trade-offs you have to take. When you're looking at the catching position, it's not as easy as you think. Now, the trade-off also is what do you have to give up? And if we're talking about catchers, I love Danny Jansen. always have loved Danny Jansen. Love saying that name, Danny Jansen. Like a Rex Becks guy from Michigan. Catches for the Toronto Blue Jays. And he's, even though outperformed Alejandro Kirk, who is a 25-year-old hitter first, but good receiver, kind of stout, stocky, fat Mexican catcher, funny fucking guy, like just perfect prototype catcher Danny Jansen hits 290 behind him walks at a high rate with like a 480 slug which is better than say Suzuki might would be the best slugging percentage on the team the Blue Jays are in kind of sale mode too which is what you've heard about Vlad Guerrero Jr. that brings me to my next player boom how was that yeah shoots he scores so that was on my list I had the try had the Vlad Guerrero Trout Jr. I know it would take a little bit more but is that out of the realm of possibility? Sure, let's just talk about Vlad, and I have real strong opinions about him, So, but we, to, I think a, the best way to share these opinions is to at least get a baseline. I think you would be representative, fairly, of what an average baseball fan would think about Vlad Jr. So what do you think of him? Just rakes. Rakes. Uh, has speed for what it looks. Okay. He's faster than he, than he looks, okay, I should say. I don't a, know if he has actual speed. We don't overthink it, dude. Don't get into the base running. No, yet. he rakes, dude. He's got power rakes. hitter, and that's what I feel about him. He can And plays what position? Plays third base. First. First. Close. Close. Very far away. Plays first base. Plays every day. So that's good. Bill James would say the most important statistic is, is games played. He plays 158 games a year on average. Last Seems to go years. balls to the wall. Does he? He plays hard. I don't know if that goes hand in hand with playing every day. See, I don't know. That's my – is he – If I you said play speed. every day, you you have a little bit of – you have the Cadillac gene. You know when not to go hard because you play every day. I think more so my balls to the wall comment 
relates to when he runs. And I, I said speed earlier. I don't know if he's actually fast, but he looks like he's putting in a lot of effort. You're Maybe do- that's the hair. You're doing a perfect job for what I need to make my points about Vlad because we just have to set the stage because the first thing what you said is what everybody would say, rakes, power. Now, most people know he plays first base and not third. I don't. I, that's I okay. Kinda... That's okay. But after you get past position, hits for power, young guy, Vlad Jr., you know, big prospect. Like, he's been in the league six fucking years, no, whatever, five years. There is a huge misconception about what he was when he came up, how he performed initially, and who he has become. And there are a lot of question marks around him. Because now if I told you over the last three years, 22 to 24, including this season, he's played every day. His slugging percentage would be tied with Seiya Suzuki this year. Is Seiya Suzuki an awesome power hitter this year? Not awesome. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We would like to see him hit for more power, I think. I think every Cubs fan that watched Seiya Suzuki with a rational opinion would say, it would be nice if Seiya hit for more power. Vlad Jr. does not hit for more power than, say, over the last three years. Or they're on the same, it's like 462 to 460. That's the thought. I would have lost that bet. All right, how about that? that? No one would have thought that. Now, again, the argument, he plays every day. Does he need rest? Why doesn't he do more? Buddy, he's got Bo Bichette in front of him. I mean, he's had some good players around him. Not that George Springer has been great, but he ain't fucking terrible either. Uh, I don't need to get into the Toronto Blue Jays depth chart, but you would trust me if I told you that their offense was good enough for that guy to thump, right? Not really the last three full seasons. Now, why? I don't know. Does he not like Toronto? Is the AL East hard? You know, is it change of scenery good? You don't want to rule guys out because they haven't been great. I mean, he could be great. He has true 70, 75 power. just not on display. Do you think that there would be... It would take too much to get a player. The like Blue Jays would be super stubborn about it just because they have a really huge fan base. I mean, they are Toronto or Canada's baseball team. And the people that do like the Blue Jays fucking love him. And he's a homegrown kid who's been there. And whether or not they, they haven't had any success with him, but you're giving him up. The Blue Jays are a publicly are owned by a publicly traded company, Rogers Communications. Mm-hmm. So when you make these decisions on a large scale, they're not getting rid of a fucking reliever, right? They're not trading, like, this isn't small. They they DFA'd Kevin Biggio the other day. Like, that, no one gives a fuck. He's been brutal. If you're going to trade Vlad, you're going to get a really bad reaction. It's a publicly traded company. That's the type of thing, like, I wouldn't, I know this sounds crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if you needed, like, board director approval to trade Vlad Guerrero Jr., based on the negativity because it would be the ultimate white flag surrender Blue Jays. And then that would basically be surrendering that core and they made a bunch of good investments around it. Not good investments, but significant investments. Right, and then they have to start thinking of advertisement dollars. I don't know how that, if they have to keep that Yeah, if separate. it's advertising or it's just general fan sentiment or it's just like, you know, that's, these are decisions that like no baseball team has to consider except for publicly traded which I believe is just the Braves and the Blue Jays. Like, do you think John Fisher from the Oakland Athletics gives a shit about fan perception? But he's moving them to Oakland. Yeah. They just put a bid in, too, to, get to, to play 10% of their home games on the road so they can promote. It's like a, they're like a step removed from the Savannah Bananas. A publicly traded company has to answer much more to their fans and shit. And I'm not saying, like, oh, I'm going to sell my, sh- my shares or whatever. It's just... That's just the way they operate. They're sensitive. So this is all going back to the Cubs trading for Vlad Guerrero Jr. And I'd say, what position would he play? So then is Michael Bush play third base? Christopher Morell out of the lineup every day? Nico Horner's got a broken hand. You know, I don't want to trade for Vlad Guerrero out of urgency because of her depth chart. I want to trade for somebody because it makes sense. And I think it's a reach. So Then <laughs> the, next, the next trade piece, I don't have any players in mind. And I don't want you to, like, tell us who we think we should get, but when do we make moves to bolster the bullpen? And is that – do we even end up making moves? Are we, like – are we going to be – we could be sellers, I feel. Yeah, but, like, every seller is a seller right now, right? Okay. So, like, most – 
there might be new sellers, some new sellers. I should say that. I should. I shouldn't be so grandiose in that. Here's My some. mind was so set on what are we trading for? When are what? Who are we getting? How are we going to improve this team? And now I'm almost like, well, are they going to trade at all? Well, if June looks like May, then you're sellers. Yeah, that's a fact. That, but that's the last thing I want. Like, who would you sell though? There's no nobody to trade. I'm interested. How about that? There's a call to action. We don't do call to actions for subscriptions. I will do a call to action right now. Who on the Cubs is even possible to be traded under the under the mindset of it's a, we're sellers, so we got to go get a return. Like I was floating Ben Brown out there because he was dealing, and it's like eh, that's not gonna happen over the long run for the next 18 months. It just isn't gonna happen. I'm sorry, guys. I I'm don't not trying to take anything away from this kid. Right? There's nobody. Because everybody's on these extent. Like someone would say, trade Ian Happ. Like for what? Who wants him? If we don't want him, he's on a team-friendly fucking deal. Relatively speaking, I guess for a Gold Glove left fielder, was it three years, 60 million? Like if we don't want him. Like what the f who does? Who's gonna come in here and be like, here's a bunch of shit for you know? Have? Nope. I don't see it, Mahoney. Well, on on to the next topic then. Thank you, because that was trade block, right? Yes. Monday morning trade mill. Outside on the front yard, sun shining. You might have heard a car peel off. We're in the elements. You might see some folks on like a bike trail behind us. It's just one of those gorgeous days. You had to take advantage of it. Um. Mentioned Ian Happ. Off day. Happy. I'm happy <laughs> that he's turned it a little bit. But that's not enough right now. Is it? I have a question. Who needs to step up the most, or do we just need to collectively all step up? That's like the most blanket question I could have given you, but... I mean, I'm happy that... I mean, the segment name, what is it again? Happy. I'm Hap E. Why with a Y? I mean, you got a segment name, but you don't have like a question for or like a, a follow-up. No, the question is, Ian Happ has turned it around. Who do who who really needs to step up the way he has next? Okay, who is going to make you happy? Uh, Dansby Swanson. That was more of a clarifying question, but sure, you think Dansby Swanson's ready for it? I don't think so. He needs like a hot week. He does do this though. Play like shit, then go off for ten days. But I don't want that. I just want steady. Is that too hard to ask? Is it too hard? Dansby Swanson, eh, not it's, sure. It's not too hard to ask. We, we need some consistency. I mean, there's consistency in at-bats, but there's not consistency in scoring runs. So here's a little. how you win the game. Here's a vibe check for you. Nico Horner out, don't love. Michael Bush going from first base to second base. You know, not, not going to love that over a long period of time. Even if he can hack it for a little bit. Someone was saying, I think I read somewhere. Where did I read this? Someone wrote it, and I read it, that it was a positive that Michael Bush came up as a third baseman in the minor leagues with the Dodgers. And so that should lend itself well to playing second base for the Cubs, which is fair, like, if he was blind and you needed to just, like, tape he on He can the take round like, balls yeah, is basically what that, that is saying. He knows where the f second base is. Like, that's the extent of – the transferability there at the big league level. What the fuck are we talking about? That is, yeah, that's a, that's I don't a give reason a shit even I know that, that he was in Tulsa taking ground balls at third base for 30 fucking games four years ago. Shut up. Like that, people just surrender e so easily to the. They're pissed off that finch too. Is that a finch? I thought that was a great horn doll. I told you guys I'm not pumping the, the birds in this. But narrowing in on Michael Bush, because I'd like to see him get going. I don't know what a position change is going to do to him. I don't know if he likes first base. Maybe, maybe second base kind of sparks him a little bit. This is a weird thing, though. Baseball players are weird guys. I'll give you an example. Mookie Betts wanted to play shortstop. He's like one of the greatest outfielders of all time, defensively, on a 110-win baseball team, lobbying to go play shortstop because he wants to. Is it? be fun like playing yeah. short now yeah. that sparks that like gives you a little bit more of that boyhood let's go have some fun you have a little bounce right you're gonna have fun today and in a game where everybody is so disciplined talented robotic you have to 
go through tens of thousands of fucking players for you to get to the big leagues yourself. So what separates like really good? And so this is a small little thing where like you have that bounce. You want to be there. You want to play. I want to be there. This is what I want to do. Dansby Swanson gets way more out of his ability because he has that every day. He wants to be there. And why I'm kind of, this is such a long tangent, why I'm kind of out on him right now is that he's distracted and he's fucking bitching. He's got a bad attitude. He's way better when he's fucking little you, kid running around. So Michael Bush going to second base, if this sparks that boyhood little, you could get a little boost. This is fun, dude, because we'll play second base. Now, defensively, metrically, objectively, statistically, analytically, it's going to cost you runs defensively. So that's why I want to see the back get going. You asked me who could get going next to Ian Happ. Yeah. It's not going to be Morell. Morell needs to fucking take a week off. Morell needs to go home and have lunch or something. Like home to Dominican. Week. Just go sit on the beach, bang some of the local girls from home, come back. Go get your rock star treatment and have him roll a red carpet out for you. He, is, he doesn't have his swag. And that was kind of a, that's a risk with Morell. So I'm just addressing a couple of the people that I think would jump to the top of the list and say these are guys that could get going. And Morell doesn't have his swag. Swag ain't there right now. No. All right, well, let's hope they freaking do because, and then my last question about that uh, within the, you know, the same realm, like, there's no help coming up, right? There's not another guy like that we're going to bring up that can contribute right away. Nobody yeah. that, and I, this needs to be addressed. This absolutely needs to be addressed for everybody. I mean this with as much as I could say anything at all ever about the Cubs or baseball or anything. Publish for people to consume. This is something that's, that far supersedes anything else I could say. You cannot, under any circumstances compromise a young player's development because the big league club has holes in it. 10-4. Ever. Shaw, he can hit. What are you doing? I was going to bring that Why up Why are we going to expose guys? Sh- like, they did, like, when they're ready, they're fucking ready. That's a fact. When you're ready, you're ready. And not a day sooner. And that means everything for contracts, playing time, depth chart. When you're ready, you're fucking ready. You and if somebody's going to go out and hit 230 player. in May, I'm not going to turn around and be like, well, Owen Cassie can't be much worse. Sure. So let's just make him worse. Let's just make him just as bad. Let's just fucking ruin his, his big league experience. Let's just bring him up and be like, hey, these veterans that are on average contracts, $14.5 million of the guys in the nine. You're going to go in for one of them. We're going to pay 750 grand. You've never been to Chicago. You don't know shit. Everyone's going to try and fucking hang out with you, take advantage of you. Everyone's going to be in your fucking ear. We're going to need you to go out, hit 330 for us, and play average to above average outfield defense. And we need you to do it right now under the pretense of us not ruining the season because everybody else didn't do their job. So now we need you to do it, kid. Like, Jesus fucking Way too Christ. Much. Are we that asking this kid to play for us? Yeah, dude. I, I'm anxious saying that shit. How about fucking, can we get eight years from this kid? Yeah, you want to ruin someone's career to meal piece or to, you know, patch up a big league team? That's not, that's too much. Counterpoint. Give it to me. Who said I'm ruining his career? He just needs a chance. Who know? You never yeah. know. You never know. You never know. Correct. I don't. However, I, tr- I would trust. I have to trust. I don't have a choice to trust. They're like the fucking scouts and the people hired to do it are adept at knowing at least more than I or you. And that's the only thing that matters. If we, at, at any point, you're promoting, now there's ex- circumstances, exceptions, I should say. And the exception is a guy that's like t- 26 years old and the minors is like, you're not coming up. Like Mervis, perfect example. Buddy, this is it. You can do it now or never. Yeah. Never. That's like his. he's been getting his shot is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. It's like it's not going to come in another year. You have everything you're going to have at AAA. So, like, can you make pitch-to-pitch adjustments in the big leagues? Cannot. Can you hit major league average fastball? Cannot. So. Okay. Well, that's, well let's – on to the next one. I wanted to kind of give some – I guess I could do a ball or strike here. Hmm. 
baseball or strike, the Cubs will win three in a row in the month of June. Fucking. Too many get striked. There, there's too many games. There's too many games, and it, it, like four in a row ball. Okay, we haven't won three in a row in months, and we're due to go on a little bit of a run, isn't it? Even as a bad baseball team, we're due isn't to go it on so a run. that you're due? That's one of the more frustrating things about this run too. It hasn't been, the way that it was good in the start of the season when it's like ooh, normally it's bad. Uh, is is that same parallel to how bad it's been? It's like. Well, normally it's not this bad at all. Like our bad's way worse than regular bad right now. Yeah, and like we won two against the White Sox and had felt to nothing. claw. Felt nothing. And it, the walk off. I got like a little bit happy, you know, a little uppity on the on the walk off. But that game, like they were not fun to watch for me. It felt like, you know, it was excruciating most of the time, and it was against the shittiest team maybe ever. Is it, I'm gonna be such a bitch here, so I don't want to be because it's the Monday Morning Cub Show, and I, we are digging ourselves out of this because I'm a week away from sincerely apologizing, turning the page, and just fucking getting a lobotomy. <laughs> I'm not joking, man, because I know that like you sweep the White Sox, you need to win those two games, you need to claw the bait. I didn't feel anything. They went to Cincinnati. It was like, this is not going to be good at all. Anticipating brutal offense. Like, yeah, you want to show Todd getaway game. Congratulations, you didn't get swept in Cincinnati. And, yeah, your your anticipation was based, like, spot on. Your feeling coming off of the wins going into a series, you know, a divisional series is, is exactly what happened. Because they looked like looked shit like. against the White Sox. Like, what do you have to? You have to go down six. You have to go down five one at home, under the fucking lights. Absurd. How many? How many night games do you mid? How many night games do you get at Wrigley? All right, you get back to back nighters against against a hometown team that they're gonna be awful the rest of the season. The only thing they want to do is beat you guys, and then they played well. They pitched well enough, and the Cubs just shit their pants. Until it's like you're backed into a fucking corner against the worst team, arguably, in the history of baseball through the first 13 weeks of a season, 12 weeks, whatever it is. We're all stars now Ball. in the dope show. All right, that's Ball. Ball. What? Moving on. So, yeah, no, I hope the Cubs win at least three in a row. They're due to do that. They, they should mathematically go on somewhat of a little run. Why do you say that? They should. Because it hasn't happened. Buddy, we're so far into like, it, they're so far down this like it, I didn't. There's no way it could be this bad. It's already this bad. Yeah, I was just transitioning into the next topic. Oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's no, my I fault. Was, like, that's no, dude, I'm saying. sorry. Um, so I got to be better. We're I'm all stars. <laughs> this is my, it was my big Marilyn Manson um, music quote, which I don't know if that's always best to do. Yeah, we're I don't, all no one, stars. No one in the do- Cubs, all stars. Voting's re- open. Mm. Do we have anybody besides Shota that's no. going to make this team? No. No. Nope. Nobody even worth talking about. All right. Moving on. You had some Cubs history that you wanted to get into. Well, gonna... I was just trying to think of different things to talk about other than how miserable this 2024 team is under Craig Council's leadership. And this, the glaring holes and such obvious needs this team needs and how a team with such great resources and such vast organizational wealth can put, put the hey nice product at Wrigley pricey yeah pain to get to sure nice product when you get there I'm bought in in all respects of that phrase I'm bought in yeah cons- cons- customer experience is, is phenomenal if you uh, have the coin when the guy's slinging dogs in the 400 level like in the middle of handing out dogs can look over his shoulders, look into the bullpen, and be like, that guy's warm. How's that guy on the roster? He fucking means it. He knows it. Like, how? How did we How did we get to this point where everyone in the ballpark, everybody who works for the Cubs, do an employee survey? Was our bullpen good enough leaving spring training? Absolutely fucking not. Scale of one to five, one. How satisfied are you with the Cubs bullpen right now? One. Extremely dissatisfied. Employee survey. So then going back, Carter Hawkins went to Vanderbilt. Smart fucking guy, huh? 
Wait, What's do we have to do this? Do have, is, is this is this what we are at, where we're at now as a team? We have no salary cap. There's no restrictions to signing players into adding talented players to the team. You added nobody. You added Hector Neris. You're asking him to close. Fuck off. It's infuriating. Ball or strike. It's infuriating. Strike down the middle. What does Carter Hawkins do? I really that's an actual question. I know Jed's the vice president of baseball. Yeah, he, you got it. He's, he's like the general manager. center point of the, you know. Between does he act as the conduit between front office money? I think people and, over I think people complicate it. And he's like a center point for you have amateur scouting, you've got professional scouting, um, you've got your like data analytics guys. Okay. I didn't want to interrupt. I was just curious. No, I mean you just have a number of stakeholders at the table that have like specified opinions on baseball. So you have like data people, you've got amateur scouting, meaning high school, college, you've got professional scouting minors, guys that are going around looking at your players. You've got amateur scout or professional scouting minors, other organizations, you know, you might have guys crossing over doing different things. Um, and then you've got big league scouts, you know, and all these guys are putting reports together. All these guys are talking about what they're seeing. Then you're taking that, run that up against. And then this is where the data analytics, you can talk about the growing influence that they have. That's where their seat at the table Maybe. doesn't just get bigger. It just now you're adding more seats at the table to verify what's going on at the minor league level. Okay. And so the data analytics people really had their hands wrapped around big league stuff because you have good data there. And then that's, tran- that's transferring down to the minor leagues where you've got good batted ball data. And now that's starting to show itself more in college. And we're not far away from being able to have like one of those little track man things that goes behind a plate in high school just so you can aggregate data better and make decisions about like fine guys better, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So what does Carter Hawkins do? He's kind of just like that figurehead for, you know, all those pieces and how do, how do you use those pieces to build your 40-man roster and how do you use that 40-man roster to build your 26-man roster you know, and then where are you making – you're making the decisions, or okay. Jed is. Someone's making that decision to say, all right, go get a bullpen guy. Now you've tapped into all your shit. You know who the fuck is – who whose opinion matters. And then you have your own process. So, like, that's what made Theo great, right? He's just got people to work really hard for him, had a bunch of smart fucking people in the room, had a bunch of people that had, like, good relationships with. So even if you do make a mistake on a player or contract or situation, like you just bounce right back and get after it. You know, it's not like personal feelings or anything. It's just fucking business. So it's a long-winded answer about what Carter Hawkins is, but I'll tell you right now, what they're not doing is getting fucking bullpen help. I don't get it. Neither do I, man. And it's been just like waiting and waiting. Even if they were overperforming, people would be like, all right, well, we when are they going to improve it because it's not good enough? Like, everyone knows it's not good enough. And my whole thing was like, well, you know, Hayden is going to be uh, – he'll be able to go in there and Ben Brown will be able to get innings out. But that's not what they're supposed to be really doing, right? That's not by – that's not the design unless there's somebody who would – I don't know, like – I mean, you're lucky what you're getting from Ben Brown. Who the fuck went into spring training and penciled that guy in for more than, like, 45, 50 innings this year without it being a, like a – Nah, not a great scenario here, but if we have enough injuries and if he pitches well, he could leapfrog some peak and end up here. Okay. Kate Horton hurt. Yeah, it's just like it's just the most glaring thing ever and, and nothing's happening. I really hope it does soon. Sure. I don't know what else to say about that. No, I think that's completely fair. And and this is again been the the best advice I guess is like we're close to this being kind of like a casual season. That's what I see it as. I, I'm not inclined to be riding with it the way I thought. Because, like, when I say ride with it, I mean th- that it prideful attachment that you have to your baseball team. Like, dude, the Bears have years of going 7-9, and 9-7, and 6-10, and 10, where you're still proud, dialed in. They could pull this one off. Good defense. Mike Brown makes a play. Crazier things have happened. So... I think that's inherent. I don't know if it's the Chicago or just sports fans. I don't know if this is a special thing we have. But, like, that prideful attachment you have because you like the way they play. And it is the complete opposite. Oh, five White Sox. Take the cake on that. Proudest fucking team. Most attached any fan base could be to a team would be that oh, five White Sox. They were so accessible and cool and fucking representative of, like, 
I don't disagree. So Cubs and, don't have any of that shit. And we're not world beaters. I'm not a confident fan where I'm going to, like, you know, some of my buddies who, you know, root for across the country, whoever, like, oh, like, wait till you play us, man. Like, that's going to, you know, it's not like I can't talk shit right now. Buddy, I can't I make an argument confidence. that the Cubs are a top 20 organization in professional baseball, all things considered. Resources, ownership, payroll, facilities, all your natural advantages. If you consider that, and they're bottom 10 organization in baseball. I mean, at least the White Sox can hide behind, like, whatever, we're the White Sox. I mean, so many bad teams in baseball hide behind that. What do you expect from us? We're the Rockies. Like, the Cubs aren't far behind that if this is how they're going to fucking play under Craig Council. What I'm talking about is, bet you go three fucking games not putting up a crooked number. Hey, it's mid-June. The bats aren't hot now. So, I, I, we could just keep complaining. That's why I'm trying not to do, but I'm just, you know, it's and annoying. Complaining, and I hate doing that. I'd rather fucking, obviously, I'd rather just have a good time and enjoy what the Cubs do. We'll be going to the game this Friday. We're going to the game Friday. I'm going to have a good time this Friday. <sighs> I'm going to go in and enjoy the experience. That's you can't the have a better at. time than New Amsterdam, Craig, is my only ask. Well, I'm very excited to see New Amsterdam Craig again. Yeah, I and want to make sure that, like, Craig, Craig had, is supposed to have the best time. He, all, I mean, he seems to always have a pretty good time. Shortly followed by you. If you guys split an Uber home, that'd be chef's kiss. Hey, I'm just gonna split this with Craig. It's on the way. And I'm looking forward to it. We got what three at Tampa and three at St. Louis. That's what this week looks like. Tampa's underperformed. They're, they're, it's another frustrating team. So I said it like a week. I'll know this week. They got to play their fucking dicks off. Off day today. Just play hard. That doesn't mean win. Just play hard. If you want to see some signs of life out of the boys. So they come For once. Home. I mean, what if they sweep the fucking Cardinals? I got to watch my language. I'll be right back if they sweep the Cardinals. I'll tell you that right now. A hundred percent. That's what I'm looking for is an extended sign of life. Multiple days. 72-hour window of life. Bounce. Chris play. Not looking futile at the plate. So, Cubs history. Give it to me. You know, I just thought it was interesting that just doing some research, noodling things around, building the foundation for understanding, like, the you know, if I really wanted to have a substantive conversation about the history of the Chicago Cubs, can I do that? And the answer is no. I mean, I can. I can talk about the Cubs, like, famous players and World Series records and stuff. But, like, not to the extent where I can immerse myself, put myself in that universe. Can I picture it? Do I know what's going on? So I've taken on this personal, mm, it's not like a, I just find myself doing more independent research into like weird stuff about the Cubs. And Trying to become a little bit more of a historian, if you will. I didn't know. Mrs. O'Leary in the Chicago Fire burned down their field and, their, and all their fucking equipment. Uh, Mrs. O'Leary's cow was exonerated a few years back, but the fire itself burned it all down. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The Great Chicago Fire, 1871. The the Cubs were playing. They had had the season. That was their first professional season in the National Association, 1871. Chicago Fire. They had to play the rest of the season on the road. And then because all their shit burned out, they didn't play in 72 or 73. He just didn't have a fucking team. Seven, 72 or 73. You're talking 1872 <laughs> or 73. Just like Never done that. Yeah. That was a first. Yeah, 72, 1872 and 1873. Not a lot's going on in the United States at this time. A lot is going on. You got your industrial revolution's about to take off. It's a reconstruction era. Tensions are just running high. Dysentery everywhere. It's a real tough place to get a fucking... I don't even, what are you, two decades out of penicillin? At least. The chlamydia is robust in damp, moist areas, geographically. Yep. Chip away your own ice. Also anatomically. 
Even if it existed, did they even have ice in the 1800s? Yeah, they had ice. I knew they had like those delivery blocks. Yeah, ice houses. Okay, I just didn't know like if that came in early 19. Big industry wiped away by electricity. That's why they got rid of Tesla, the powers that be. Because he, he would have been able to power everybody. And so big ice. They got rid of Tesla? Tesla's, Tesla was like canceled in his time. Really? For being too... Oh, all right, yeah. I don't know what they did to Tesla. He was just a little eccentric? Um, I think he was too brilliant and couldn't be controlled. Scared a lot of higher-ups. So they painted him as a madman. Ipso facto, we got ACDC, brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not talking Thunderstruck, Mahoney. I'm not talking Thunderstruck. So, anyways, they come back in 74. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. That's the end of today's Chicago history lesson with the Cubs. I have, I just measured myself and was like, that is 15 minutes, just unrestrained tangent. You're just going to sit here and go, yep, that's cool. I'll just talk myself into feeling good about everything I learned. So I'll come back next week with a better. I did find that very interesting. I, I didn't know that they fucking played in 71. You had to declare yourself as in the National Association. You had to go to a convention. You had to pay a fee. You had to send team members. The Reds were the first professional team in 1869, and they went 57-0 and that year. So, like, everybody had to get certified. You had to go and, like, register. And get no, a notarized. We are the Chicago baseball team. And then the name was given to them by the sports writers, I believe. They are called the White Stockings. The Colts, the Orphans, Chicago team. And then they were called the Cubs because they were just young. Young Cub. Young Cub. Hmm. In the hood. Hmm. So 71, 18. <laughs> I read this somewhere, dude. Trust me. Okay, I believe it. Just trust me, I read it. it. Me. Fire. They don't go to the convention. They don't send out. There's just no team. There's no Chicago Cubs without the Chicago Fire. I don't know. I, I actually think the Chicago Fire almost stopped the Chicago Cubs. They I don't existed. Know if the naming conventions would have followed the same. No, it absolutely would have. Absolutely, absolutely. Cap Anson was responsible for them being named the from going from the White Stockings to the Colts to the Orphans. Okay. He 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 had basically responsible for the naming conventions of the White Sox for the last two decades of the 19th century. There's nothing to do with the fire. No, okay. No fire. They just Same didn't names. play. They didn't play. What happened? Fire. Postponed. Season canceled. Fuck. Got them next year. That one's canceled too. Bad fire. It's like a bad pandemic almost, but it's not COVID. Like baseball. Basically, that. what I'm saying is the Chicago Cubs went through a COVID period in 72, 73, 18. <laughs> so they bounced back. Let's our see this... I'm saying our Cubs haven't. We, we, yeah. we got destroyed by COVID. Financial losses, too leveraged into the cash flow of the operation. Take that cash flow out. Probably had a hard time paying salaries. We had to fire all those fucking employees. It's terrible. This is the Monday Morning Cub Show. I don't feel any better. I don't expect any of you guys should either. Do you got any on any other takeaways besides just let's hope? Oh, you know, I saw something funny on Twitter where a guy was like, no, I didn't see it on Twitter. Where did I read I read this in The Economist. It was an opinion. It was an op-ed column. And a guy was talking about, work conferences, sales conferences, and industry trade shows. Yeah, I and look he, at those things. He was just writing about how like how many great careers were probably lost to the social shenanigans. And he was encouraging readers, subscribers of the economists to send their own personal anecdotes for him to compile. That's where I read it. I read it in the Economist. And so I was I read it and I go and this is something me and Mahoney would get lost in for hours trading stories. There are so many. Oh. As soon as you said, like, somebody going maybe a little socially overboard and careers ruined. 
I have stories I wouldn't put on the dark. I wouldn't talk about. I them would here. put them on the dark web. Yeah, dude, no <laughs> like, way. Four chan, no way. No, there is no amount of anonymity. Yeah, hey, there you go. <laughs> that would let me tell some of them. There is one guy I worked with who's one of my favorite coworkers, sales guy, and I worked at a company. It was like a. Uh, it was just an awesome company to work at. And the dudes you worked with were great. You were smart enough to be in the room wearing a suit, but not too smart. And your primary traits were like being cool, relatable, working hard, being one of the guys, but also being smart enough to just like have enough of a business conversation. That's kind of the pool you're working with. But like that discipline is important. Yeah. You know, showing up on time. I love that. Hey, I'm going to be late. It's like, What? Um, let's end on, there was one positive thing that I did see in the news, actually, Catman. I was in the middle of telling you a story. Oh, you're still going there? A guy you know. We went to a sales retreat. I'm trying to give you, here's the population of guys. So it's not like some sleazy sales company. It's like a legit career sales oriented, community based. I totally know what you're To be a partner in the firm, you have to like volunteer 20 hours a month. And like, it's a huge, like employee owned, the fucking lady answering phones has got stock in the company. It's a really nice company. It's a... It was a really good experience. And one of the guys that I had worked with had come over from a huge company. And we we were way smaller. he came come in from a big company. And I just love work environments where guys come in from big companies to small companies. Because it's it's the complete opposite of when you're coming from a small company, you go into a big company, you're like listening, you're interested, you're assuming things are different, better. When you're coming from a big company to a much smaller, you have that like cowboy, zealous like, let me see this is how I do it. Yeah. You know, this is how we did it here. So we had one of those guys and he was he was pissing so many of the partners off, but he was cool with the peers. Got he was cool with like our our age. He's pissing the partners off because he like just show up fucking late, didn't give a fuck. I don't know. Bad habits. Anyways, we go to the sales retreat. He gets fucking loaded. And he's he's hitting on this girl at a bar. And he, like, slides his hand on her pants. Oh, no. Like, picks at her thong. That's like an assault. Buddy, like, picks at the thong. And was, like, told the group, he was like, watch this. Not good. Uh-oh. And the lady's husband, she's, like, sitting next to her husband. Oh, no. I think she had a back tat, and that caught his attention. He was like, I bet she's wearing a thong. Let's go find out. Don't do it. That's be- Don't do it. Watch this. And then the husband slugs him, fucking knocks him down, cracks him in the jaw, just gets right up, boom. And then turns out the husband is no. a client. I had a feeling owns a company, say that. owns a company that is a, is one of our one of a bigger client in our northern region. I was like, "What the? Who the fuck are you?" And he like looks at the name. He's like, "Wait a second. Name tags are on. Where's fucking Bob? Yeah, he's like a polo. Where's is fucking Bob here? Get his it. Who is? Who the fuck are you?" So that guy, that was like midnight. I think he was like, I think like our CEO like got out of bed and fired him. Yeah, he's just driving back next morning. That was it. Now he was a good sales guy too. Picking out a thong. Midnight. That <laughs> a seedy. Like Wisconsin resort that we had booked for the weekend. I do have like a somewhat of a your turn contrast feel good story. The Catman, he shared this on Instagram or Twitter, one of the two. Uh, a father and daughter wedding, so they were about to do the you know daddy daughter dance. They end up you know breaking up. He's like, that's not going to work for us. They play the Cubs song, and then they had a catch. They played catch at the wedding. I thought it was kind of nice. Ca- I it was Cap's before. wedding? The daughter and dad. They they put on their jerseys no, all of Cap's a sudden. No, Cap's daughter got married? No, no. Cap oh, had just I was going to say. Like, I didn't get invited. No, no, no. His uh, He was just sharing. like he, I think he hmm. saw it and reposted it or something along those lines. But um, Cap loved that. He loved it. Cap loved it. He did. And it was, it was I loved it too because it was something that I had actually seen that before. Cap probably has a wedding in the family. He's probably just planting seeds. Hoping and hoping his son sees it or something. Hoping somebody in the family sees it. like, man, dad like, really. What a great idea. Wow, that was marvelous. Look at that. That's how it's done. That what would Cap say about that? Cap would say, Now these are people who know weddings. Yes. Very nice feel good moment. This is the Monday morning Cub show.
Yep. Yeah, it's a good moment. I think it's a little. It's not great. It's just better than you know. I'm not a, a pro- sexual assault to end the show on. Jesus fucking Christ. What do you think going down the back? Somebody's backs up a pants and grabbing a thong is. Oh, that was sexual assault. Yeah. 100%. Oh, I was telling that. I was telling that story. He got knocked the fuck out and fired on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I was, was in advocating. I, I thought the... it was like a. No, I'm not obvious... advocating. We... Whoa. I'm saying more like I just wanted to end the show on more of a positive note. I now thought that you. I thought you were saying that I wanted to end the show on a sexual assault. I think that's like actually what charge. I said, like quote unquote. If you. You take that out of context. It's like, hey, let's end this on a quick assault. Yeah, like, but we can't feed the algorithm these sound bites. I don't even know if this show is going to be up for over an hour. Is the, the artificial intelligence is going to have us flagged here. This is the Monday Morning Cub Show. It's not a call to action. The Cubs are 32 and 34. Reaching here, guys. Honestly, yeah. reaching. Reaching for anything. Off day Monday. These three in Tampa are winnable. The three at home against St. Louis are mandatory. Mahoney and I will be there Friday. If you see us, don't say a word. No, I'm just kidding. If you say, yeah, let's get a, say what up. Hey, let's have a white claw. All right. White claws. What are we going to have? Let's have some cold beers. I'll be at Sluggers before the game. I'll be at Sluggers after the game. Um, anything else, Mahoney? No, man, that's all I got. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all in this together no matter what happens, and let's have a good time. We're all in this together. This is uh, the Monday Morning Cub Show, June 10th, from the front lawn. I'll drag this fucking shot as long as I want. It's in person. I have a haircut appointment I got to get to.